Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Real Next webinar series. Today we are talking about more smiles, less styles. I'm Jeff Finn, CEO at Real Next, and with me today is Matthew Smith, head of West Coast Sales for the company and uh, part of the team to assure client success and help to make sure that everyone knows how to take the most uh, advantage of their Real Next solution. So, Matt, as uh, going to talk a lot about targeting email marketing campaigns, driving high probability uh, prospecting activities, and making sure that your calls when you make them are as productive as possible. So, Matt, I will let you take it away. As always, we will be recording and uh, certainly open to your questions along the way. So if you have any questions, please post them. We'll do our best to address and uh, look for the uh, recording uh, soon after the session. Thanks, Jeff. As always, it's a pleasure to be on with everybody here today. I'm going to throw out two quick polls. I'll spend about maybe 60 seconds on uh, each poll. I'd love to know what you specialize in, sales, leasing, tenant rep, you do it all. Uh, executive management, marketing support, uh, property management. Fill those in. Uh, I'll give it another 45 seconds. And today's all about more smiles and less dials. I'm going to throw up another poll here um, as uh, as we go along as well. And uh, we're going to be covering real campaigns and real blasts. And I'll tell you where and why and how we use them because there are certain times we want to use certain emails. And Real Next has you covered on all three bases. All right, looks like I got most everyone voted here, and it looks like investment sales is leading with I do it alls. Uh, leasing is starting to jump up. I feel like we're watching a horse race. <clears throat> this is fantastic, almost 100% vote votes. Uh, I'm going to close this poll out here and I'll share it with everybody. Investment sales, leasing, tenant rep, I do it all, and executive management marketing support. Um, thanks for joining us on that. Uh, the next poll I'd like to show out here is how many calls do you make a day? Are you making one to 10 calls? Are you making 11 to 20? Are you making 21 to 40? Are you burning up the phones making 40 plus? One to 10 calls, one to 20 calls, 11 to 20 calls. Look at that, it's like a horse race again. Thanks everybody for voting. This gives us a lot of insight because uh, my, Goal is to throw this poll out next time, and I want you to be in that 11 to 20 sweet spot, maybe 21 to 40, but 40 sometimes pushing it. We want to have more smiles and less styles, and that means more targeted ways to hit our prospect. It doesn't mean working less, just working smarter. If you have nine phone calls and you connected with four possible folks that you can represent for sale, lease, or any commercial services, then that's what we want to uh, help you with. So I'm going to share this poll out again and. One to 10, uh, hopefully you're smiling when you're dialing, and if you're not, we're gonna help you with that today. So a couple things I wanna talk about. Uh, when I talk about real campaigns, there's real campaigns, uh, and that is our email marketing program built into our system. Real campaigns are fantastic because they're based upon how many emails you send, not how many contact records you have. So if Edwin has 50,000 contacts and Cynthia has a million contacts, we're only charging you for how many people you send to. So it's very cost effective, very, very low uh, cost when it comes to sending these. You can send real campaigns through two portions of our program. One is gonna be in the Real Next CRM. That is gonna be something that is gonna be contact-based. Uh, we're gonna be sending stuff out to somebody. Maybe we just call them and we wanna send them up a follow-up email, or maybe we want to reach out to them for their leases expiring. The other portion is, um, Inside, if we have a property to market uh, for sale or for lease, if we're looking for space um, and so forth. So utilizing the Real Next program, there's a couple ways to have more smiles, less styles. Uh, one is what I really like to do is I like to keep track of some buyer requirements. Uh, buyer requirements are in on every single record. So you can keep a view for hospitality. You can keep a view for uh, multifamily, retail, industrial, tenant rep, or anything else you do. So one is keeping track of buyer requirements or tenant requirements are gonna help you to be able to market. And if you're on the executive management team or the marketing side, remember if your brokers are putting this information in, it's gonna benefit you and it's gonna benefit them. If you wanna see how to do this, um, you can create these custom views just by going and clicking views inside your records. Now there's a couple ways that we're gonna to wanna to do real campaigns. 
Uh, one is maybe we want to call all the tenants in the market that are expiring in the next 6, 12, 18 months. Well, no problem. We can do that a couple ways. One is we can easily filter out the information based upon tenants in the market that we're talking to, uh, utilizing any one of our filters, and you can save these filters to make things easy for you. Another thing that we can do is we can actually go off the space itself and we can pull up all the tenants that are expiring based upon a space. No matter what you do in our program, whether you're doing it from a contact, you're doing it from a property, you're doing it from a space, remember our system is completely relational. Let me give you a great example that I was teaching last week. And what it was is we're working a market and the market is Las Vegas. And we recently found out that there was an industrial property that sold. So what we did is we came into our real next program and we said property types, industrial. Then from here, what we did is we pulled a radius. That's right, we pulled a radius. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to click on our map. And then from here, we can pull a radius. So we're gonna guesstimate it's gonna be about 10 to 15 miles there of properties. From here, we can start narrow down our criteria because these are all industrial properties in that market. They're all around that property that recently sold, but some of those industrial properties could be 1,200 square feet. They could be 1.2 million square feet if you know the Vegas market. So one of the things that we might want to do additionally to have, again, we want to have more smiles and less dials is you can add in different filters. We can select things in here like node expiration date. Maybe you want to add in here clear height, dock height, office, number of units, 10 to 50 units. You can use this for any asset class you want. You can also use this to look up tenants and buildings. So if you have the information for your tenant reps out there, you can use this as a relational tool to do that. Once we create our filter, based upon the example that I gave you for your lease comp or a comp teaser, now what we can simply do is go link contacts owner or link company owner. If you have your properties linked to a company, you just have to do one more step. It only takes a couple seconds. If you have them linked contacts to the owner for the contact. It's real simple. It will pull up a list and that list will look similar to this. Now, once we have that list, who are going to prospect, whether it's tenants in the market, maybe it's building owners in the market to represent them for their leasing needs, whatever your email is going to be, you're going to hit this magical button called Real Campaigns. Now, when we hit Real Campaigns, it's going to say two things to us. One is it's going to say selected records. Now, I haven't selected any records. So what it says next is records and current query. And what that means is down at the bottom here, you'll see I have 38 records. If I hit real campaigns, records and current query, it's going to email all 38 people. If you have a database, Synthony, of 1.5 million people and you hit all people in your query and your query is 1.5 million, it'll email everyone. So just please make sure that you have your filter set so you're emailing people based upon what they're looking for. If you notice on social media, a lot of people were talking about unsubscribing and I think my unsubscribe finger is completely swollen because I get a lot of you know Thanksgiving emails and things that just really aren't pertaining to stuff that I want. And that's why we talk about smiles and less dials because it's gonna allow us to you know pinpoint and really start to get there. So one of the emails that I wrote, and if you want a copy of this email, I'm happy to give it to you. Uh, it talks about our mobile app for tenant reps. And it's really awesome because I put in here five bullet points on how it can help the tenant make a better decision when leasing space and how we're able to negotiate better with a landlord and keep track of the negotiations. I also was able to let them know that they can schedule a time with me by simply clicking this link. It also is gonna address each person. So in these emails that we have, we try to make sure that we can make them as personal as possible. What we wanna be able to do is we wanna email them out and say, dear first name, dear company, dear so-and-so. And again, when you look at these different templates that you may have, you might have a bunch of them, four reasons to get evaluation, why you need a tenant rep, hey, your lease is expiring, and any information that's inside your real next program, Maybe it's buyer profile. Hey, it's been a while, Edwin, since you updated your buyer profile. Love to find out what you're buying. Is this still accurate? Elizabeth, hey, by the way, uh, you haven't updated your buyer profile in six months. I'd love to get that updated to see if you're interested in updating something else. Any of those data points that are in our program can be added into what we call merge fields. If you click the bottom left corner, it'll allow you to select those fields and you can pull from those fields. 
So if you have investor in information like, hey, you work on all agricultural, great. Last time I talked to you, you're looking for grape farms. Is that something you're still interested in, David? Or have you moved on to wineries? Whatever it would be, you can take those fields and you just simply double click them and it'll add them into your email. Once you get an email you like, you can hit the save button, name that email, and then that email will be inside your list of templates. Your list of templates could be emails just like I have here that are text-based, or they can be emails that are based upon with imagery. Maybe it's a newsletter you want to send, your company. Great. You get a company newsletter, copy the HTML and put it in there. Maybe you have a YouTube channel. I spoke to someone recently that very big in YouTube, and it was awesome to talk to them. And they're moving their company over to Realnext, and I can't wait to see his videos and his emails out there. Same thing for a listing. Now, if you are in a corporate company or you have corporate emails that go out, you can always just take that source code from corporate. Ask your marketing person, uh, paste it in here, and when you do, it'll create that email for you as well. You know, a couple of things we can do here. One is we can preview it so we make sure that it comes out right. The second thing we can do is we can email it out right away. We made our 20 calls, 40 calls, 80 calls. Uh, we want to email everybody afterwards and let them know, boom, here's an email. We have a lease comp. We want to let them know what lease in the market. We have a sale comp. We want to know what sold in the market. But you can also send it out in the morning. So we might find out that Friday mornings are better to send emails out. So I'm going to send this one at 5.09 a.m. So Jeff thinks I get here at 5 o'clock in the morning, even though the system's doing for all automatically. So again, it's great to be able to send those emails through there and there's a lot of templates. We also can build templates for you. So if you're not computer literate or you're not um, really good with HTML and you need some help or you're struggling, we can help build the templates for you. If you want a whole series of templates, we can do that for you. Obviously there's gonna be a small cost, but we can help you do that as well uh, when you're sending these emails. Now, how does more smiles and less styles come in, Matt? You haven't even talked to me about that. Well, remember, we're working off uh, tenants in the market. We're working off buyer needs. We can navigate an area and isolate that and send it out for a lease comp or a sales comp. But when we're emailing those people out, we're also tracking who opened it and who clicked it. So imagine you're that person that's 40 plus dials a day, and that might be awesome but you're not smiling every one of them. It might be a lot of click, 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 bang. We sent it to 37 people. 19 of those emails delivered. That means that a lot of them bounced. Eight of them dropped and 10 of, 10 of them bounced. Drop means it tried to deliver it and it just couldn't. So most likely it's just a dead email. Now, seven of those people opened the email. So if I had to ask you a question, Jeff, do you wanna make 37 phone calls or do you wanna make seven phone calls to set a meeting, okay? Jeff's gonna wanna make seven phone calls to set a meeting. He's not gonna wanna make 37. So again, this is where more smiles than dials come in. With Realnext, you can simply click opens. Now here are the emails that are open, and I'm gonna say add to group. From here, I'm gonna say new group, opens, less dials, more smiles. I'm gonna select my contacts, I'm gonna hit save, add my contacts, and I want everybody to see this in real time. So now I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna refresh my screen. And one of the neat things, and you can do this for all kinds of emails with inside of our program. Now we can come in here and we can look at our email that said more smiles, less dials, and we can pull it up. I have a lot of emails in here. We'll just say it's this one here. Now we can call those 27 people to see if they're interested in it. I can click the dial, um, open email. Hey Don, it's Matt, I wanted to reach out to you or Ken Stone or whoever your name is in my demo database. I sent an email out with some lease comps in the market, love to talk to you a little bit more about what's happening in there, blah, 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 blah. Whatever your presentation is, when you leave that voicemail or after that phone call, you can easily voice dictate right in there to keep track of that. And then you can go on to the next one, the next one, the next one, right? So you're calling, the, you'll probably call 37 people, but you're calling those seven people first that are showing some interest in one of your emails that you sent out. Now, please do me a favor. 
uh, I don't want Gilbert, I don't want you to call someone up and say, hey, Matt, I saw you open your email. Uh, Isaac, it's good to see you on here. I, you know better than that, but please don't call Jim and say, hey, Jim, I saw you open your email. You're probably going to scare somebody. Just say, hey, I just want to reach out, Laura, and uh, see if you received my email. It's a great way to do it. It also allows you to track all that history. So you're going to have the history on the phone call, but you can also see the history on the campaigns. So if you did send a campaign out here, you would see it. So this is probably a bad example, um, but you can see here it bounced. So I've been calling Don for weeks. I've been sending him emails out of my Outlook and Gmail. He's never responded. Well, he didn't respond because his email's bad. Perfect. Let's put it into a group and let's uh, get someone to update the emails. And if you have a bunch of emails and you're not sure, we do have a program here we offer uh, called Never Bounce that we can uh, do a service for you to check your emails out. Another way you can go ahead and you can do emails is from a asset-based email. So whether that's a, a property for, for lease you have, a property for sale you have, that would be done inside of our marketplace in the orange. So remember, it integrates into Market Edge, it integrates into the CRM. So it streamlines that process to take your property for sale or for lease. And if it's in here, it'll take the pictures, it'll take all the information directly out of your uh, Market Edge or your CRM program. Now from here, if we want to send it out, we can, you know, again, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever, any social media place will really work. But if you want to now send this out to many people, just simply click that email button. And we have custom templates. If you're part of an organization, we might have a template for you. Email us and say, hey, Maddie, do you have a template built for us? And I'll let you know. And if we do, we'll apply it to your account. Uh, we can create a custom template for you. And a custom template allows the information to be fed directly in. Uh, like this one here, they do a lot of just sold. Just sold, 112 units. Uh, let's add a couple more zeros for inflation there. There you go. Um, it's, it's $80 million a door. But again, it creates that email in, in seconds. And I'll race anybody. If you use MailChimp, Constant Contact, Chipmunky, any of that stuff, and you can beat me, create it in an email, I'll take you out to dinner. We also have a lot of pre-designed templates, and I know that Jeff and the team are working on some more design templates. And these templates look great too. They bring in your company colors. If you want to customize them, you can customize with your own colors. You can change them per email. Maybe you send an email out, Jim, you sent an email out and it had red and blue. And now you want to send an email out that's going to be gray and white. No problem. Um, easy to do. You can change it per email. You can also underline, bold, change pictures. But it brings in all the information for you directly from Realnex. So you're not typing anything in. Uh, you'll have your company logo in here. And now we can send it out to our list of people that we have back in the real next CRM. We also have another way to reach people. And this has been popular lately. And it's a way to hit our list of opt-in users. Now, Lynn, if you email somebody in the Denver uh, MSA and they're not interested in multifamily and you send them uh, a multifamily property, they would not receive it. So it's based upon the client's interest what they put in their emails i want to see industrial fifty thousand plus or i just didn't put anything in there and they're going to get your email so it's all opt-in based upon their preferences for 49 dollars, you can send it to your msa for 69 you can send it to your state and for 129 you can send it to the nation a lot of clients are doing just sold people aren't seeing a lot of sold properties in certain areas other places are seeing more sold properties than they ever have some people are seeing high vacancies and other people are seeing low vacancies. If you're trying to land a national tenant, maybe you want to go with a national campaign and let them know that you just have 100% occupancy in three of your office buildings or your retail buildings. It's a great way to meet owners, tenants, brokers, investors, and other people through our program, and you can do it for a low cost per email. Now, this is going to be per email. It's not per contact or anything, and it can go out where it's up to you know, tens of thousands of contacts. You can customize the email so your marketing team can send it for, from them and they can reply to you. Or if they're part of the marketing portion, they can send it from the company and have a reply to you as well. We also have custom domains that are going to be released and we just created a, a great simplified process to get that done. So if you're interested in a custom domain, you can email your local rep 
If you're in the West Coast, email me. I'll make sure you get set up. If you're not sure who your local rep is, email me and I'll make sure you get set up uh, with that. And again, with these emails, we can go out and we can schedule them immediately. How do I have more smiles? Again, we're going to come over to campaign statistics. If you just have a property that just leased, just sold, 100% occupancy, whatever that would be, you can come over to the statistics on those emails and you can then make those emails dynamic. People tell me, I use Chipmunky, my company gives it to me for free. Well, don't step over dollars to pick up pennies. For as low as $10 a month, you can get this and you can start calling the 16 people that clicked your email first, then call the 169 people that opened the email then call the remaining people that the email was sent to. I'm not saying that because they didn't open the email, they're not interested. I'm just telling you that most likely someone that clicked on one of your links in there, if you put a good link in, is probably going to be a higher prospect than someone that didn't. And I'll tell you this, if I email Manny tonight and I put a link in there and he clicks it, I'll know it. Manny's probably interested. And I'll call Manny and say, hey, Manny, I put something out. And he's going to say, Matty, I did. I clicked on it and I got some more information. I've done it, I know it, I know it works. This is a great way to get more smiles and less dials with those email campaigns. It tracks all the information that you send through the Real Next CRM in here. So you can go back. There's a lot of times, and including the time I was doing training where someone said, hey, I was calling Mackenzie for a while. I didn't realize her email was bad. Well, that's why. So then I can find that email and find out where it's bad on that and everything. So I appreciate everybody coming on here today. Jeff, how do we look for time? We are good. We have some, uh, some time for questions, if anyone has any. So if you want my email, okay, here my email address. Yeah, no problem. msmith at realnext.com. That's gonna be able to uh, do if you want to get questions on how to set up your filters, you want to get questions on how to set up your views. If you have any questions on setting up your templates, we can help you with that. If you want customized templates, again, you can email me. I'll get you to the right person to get set up on there. Uh, to do the voice dictation, I just hit the Windows key and the letter H at the same time. It pulls up your Windows voice dictation. That's an easy thing to do. If you're on a Mac, you're going to have to Google how to do voice dictation. Also, when I did that, click the dial. If you do have a voice over IP phone, uh, whatever your phone system is, Polycom, Telecom, et cetera, all you need to do is Google uh, Chrome plugin and put that right in there and that should get you set up. If you use the real campaigns, if I subscribe, yes, 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 Richard, you can. Real campaigns are not limited to the whole navigator. If you're a CRM user and you want real campaigns, no problem. If you want real blast, no problem. If you are a Marketplace Pro subscriber, you do have email campaigns already for you in here. Marketplace Pro, if you're a Marketplace Pro subscriber only, you get a thousand email campaigns you can send out. If you are a CRM user, you get 200 campaigns. We give you for free, use them. And if you need more, we'll help you out. So. And if you have the navigator, you get a thousand. So it's not limited to just the listing side or the other sides. You have access to all the sides. But yes, Richard, that's a great question. Biz, it's great to see you on here. Hopefully you're doing well. It's probably starting to cool down a little bit uh, where you're at. I know it gets a little hot. And Bill, good to see you on there. Um, navigator Pro data is great. If you have Navigator Pro, like some of you on here, uh, you can use that information to pull up comparable, uh, see how many sales happen in your area based upon the data we provide you in the program. You can use that radius search and then start creating some teasers on you know, what properties sold in the area, what they were, what rent comps are, what lease comps are, offer them a free valuation, whatever you want to do, and then use the program to, again, uh, get, get more uh, smiles and, and less styles. And if you're making 40 calls a day, um, maybe we can bring that down to 20, 20 more active calls. And uh, we got to make sure you're, you're in that ice bath as well. Yeah, Matt, the, uh, I think that RX data you, that you just brought up in the Navigator Pro really leads to more smiles as well. We have a number of different uh, tools built in for predictive analytics 
that help you identify the most likely sellers. For instance, the uh, loan expiration, loan maturity date, and the uh, rate on that. And uh, also uh, based on typical hold periods and we're able to model based on the last transaction date when the likely sale date is depending on property type and, and ownership type. So you begin to triangulate the uh, ownership, the uh, purchase, you know, last sale date and mat loan maturity and you can really become predictive on when that might uh, be likely to to go come to market. The other side is a lot of people have comps and they, it sits in their comps database of and it's really good information for a pricing standpoint. But what we do is we take the comps buyer and populate their buyer profile in a way that makes you, enables you to rifle shot who the best buyers are in the market based on what people have actually done. So if we, if you have the RX data, you would know that XYZ company has purchased 24 properties in the last three years and they are downtown um, uh, you know, multifamily or their you know, logistics centers or their whatever, they're actually buying and the, the smallest one they've purchased, the largest one they've purchased, the smallest dollar amount they've, they've purchased, the la hard, largest dollar amount they purchased. And when you can look at that as a portfolio and you see that uh, Matt owns 100 uh, uh, multifamily properties and one car wash, you might say, hey, Matt, what are you doing with that car wash? You might want to sell that. He said, no, no, no. I'm actually going to build a new portfolio of car washes. So you, you call Matt up and say, oh, instead of getting the listing, now you're up buying for him the, his, his next 50 properties. So using this data to target and market and, and become highly predictive in who the most likely prospects are to, to trade in the market today is invaluable. Another thing to add to that data side, Jeff, not to interrupt you, but I promise you this, that if you know your market, you'll own your market at some point in time. I've talked to many folks that are making a lot of phone calls, but they're not making the money they want to make. And it was because they had too big of a market, meaning that they had 5,000 owners they had to get to know constantly, and they just couldn't do that. So when they brought it down to you know 500 owners or the top 100 owners or top 1,000, properties that really define their market. So RX data can also help you define your market to find out whether you're taking off more than you can chew or you need to add more in order to hit your income goals that you want to hit. And if you want to talk more offline, uh, you all have my email and hopefully we can help you. And then how would this work um, for preferred RE fundraiser? I'd have to find out if you're talking about- Matt, I would, I, Yeah, I think that the, uh, the question goes to capital market side of commercial real estate. And I think that we, okay. we've, a lot of people are typically profiling buyers of property, sellers of property, but the same characteristics work for lenders. So you can begin to profile lenders. You can begin to pro profile uh, LPs. So like your your these preferred equity people, it could be mezzanine debt people. Just you, you begin to look at their profile under un, what we call the investor profile, and just begin to categorize that as you see fit. Maybe you know Matt's good for a. $50,000 check or $100,000 check into deals and he likes to participate in, you know, the $3 million offerings of, you know, whatever uh, type and you, you categorize them. And then, you know, every time you get a new fund to raise for that type of property, Matt's going to be one of your go-to investors for that. Yeah. And we, we have a lot of these fields repopulated yeah. here for you as well. Okay, now that makes more sense. I was thinking uh, something else when you said fundraiser. I was thinking about snicker bars outside of bonds. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's on there. And then also, how, how can you send? How can you set up the frequency uh, to send emails? Uh, one is, if you want to set up a frequency of emails, timelines are great to do that with. Uh, with timelines, you can create a series. Uh, one, I have one here called Smiles and Dials. Uh, I'll do an initial outreach, and then three days later, I'll send an email. Uh, if I did not leave a voicemail, I have an email. And then if I did leave a voicemail, I have another email. So I have two of them set up. Uh, and you can create a series of, of these events that will notify you each time and say, hey, um, you know, uh, Jeff, just go ahead and email them. You didn't leave a voicemail, send this email. Hey, Jeff, you left a voicemail, send this email. Uh, and you can send as many emails as you want. So if you have a million people you want to send an email to, you can send it to a million people long as your real campaigns allows for a million people. 
Now you can always add more sends. So if one month you have a listing and you want to add more sends, we can add more sends to you. And then you can always downgrade. So right now I have 1.2 million sends. I can send 1.2 million emails per month with my account. You can make that 10 million if you want. You just got to pay for how many emails you send per month in a base level. So our, our lowest level I think is 5,000 emails. And then it goes to 10,000, then it's 15,000, 20, 30, 60, 90, 120. But it's very inexpensive. Look at your chip monkey and look at your price. And I can almost guarantee you we're anywhere between 40 to 70, even 80% less. And all the data is built in here. We recently had a global organization that was going through their campaign system now is using ours because the detailed data that's in it is so valuable that you cannot pass it up on here. And you have your own list. Would you be able to leverage your sources to add LPs, et cetera, to increase the number of potential lenders and people to add back to my capital stack? Jeff, you want to answer that one because you are the capital markets guru? Yeah, so I, I, if, I, if I'm reading it right, the RX data itself doesn't bring the LPs in, but to the degree that you have uh, any source of potential investors, you can put them in and profile them as part of your investor database and put their characteristics in. And Matt, if you just want to show how, you know, you might want to show an office uh, buyer. And then if you see in that, um, where it says broker, single tenant, multifamily, what I, or multi-tenant, what I've done there is changed one of those to be LP. And so you, or you might put GP. So you can just change that to characterize the investor type to what you want, and then you can you can modify that field so you know that this is a not a, a buyer of property but an investor in in properties and, and what tier of the, the capital stack. Uh, what, what Matt's showing you is something brand new and uh, giving you a, a sort of a flash uh, advance on something that's coming out next week, but a new design editor that we have to help you to customize your your pages I only did that for William too, by the way. So yeah. now I'm an LP and uh, an owner user. And then if you want to add one for a GP as well too, great. I'm sure you're a GP, but still. Um, yeah, I'm an LP. Uh, you should know what I am, William. Give me an email. Give me a call. I'll tell you how much money I'm willing to put in, what deals I'm willing to put in. You can also put in things like target IRR and cap rate and all kinds of other cool stuff to really just base your list upon. What are the uh, – you didn't show it, Matt. What, uh, where, where... Jorge was asking about the um, setting up the uh, frequency of follow-up emails. You talk about the timeline, but if you go back into emails and just so, show how you can calendar out uh, multiple mailings into the, the future. You're what making me do my feature. Is the ability to um, make sort of the if-then statements that say if somebody responds to it to take them out of the campaign. But you can set up, a, you can, like if you want to have a, a monthly mailing for every, you know, for a group of people and you define what that mailing is, it will go out. And Matt will show you how to do that. Yeah. And, and again, you can schedule them and you can schedule them in the future. I don't recommend any drip campaigns. If you're dripping me, I'm done. I'll never talk to you again. It doesn't matter. Unless your name's David Evans, then you can call me and you can stay at my office overnight if you want. Um, uh, William, you and I will talk offline here. I got your information. I'll try to uh, copy uh, that that email. We'll talk off there. But yeah, you can you can set as many as you want. I'd be careful with setting it too many in the future because you're going to send an email you don't want to send. Um, and it's just not going to be good. But yeah, you can do them in here as well. And it's just a fantastic way to do it. Love to hear some of your success stories next time we're on a call. You can email me. You can tweet me. You can send me a message on LinkedIn. You can email myself or Jeff. And it's so incredible. The longer we're on here, the more people come on. I've never seen anything like it. And we all want to do less dials and more smiles. Or if you're doing 40 dials, let's do 40 deals. Let's get 40 meetings and let's set them up. And, uh, I think that's the play, Matt. You, you talked about it earlier. You, you said that, that 37, the list of 37, and just to make the seven calls. But if you made 37 calls, <clears throat> you'd probably get through to seven people. But if you cut if you called seven and got seven or got five out of seven, that's the name of the game. And if you can do that in everything that you're doing, so you, of the 35, 37 that you're calling or 40 that you're calling, you're getting through to 30 of them rather than the you know five or 10. Or driving the efficiency that we're all about. Or if you can be really clever, uh, and David, I'm going to teach you this trick here. Um, 
uh, David Orwick, I'm going to teach you this trick. What I've done here personally selling software is I've sent emails out to people and I keep seeing they open the emails, but they're not responding to my calls and they're not responding to my emails. So what do I do? I change my tactic and I rewrite an email and pow, they open it up and say, Matt, that was a funny email. And I get a response. And I can tell you uh, about 75% of the people that were non-responsive to three or four emails, by the fourth email I send them, if they're non-responsive, I'll change it up. And 75% of those people that I change up will email me back and be like, that was hilarious. That was funny. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I was busy, et cetera. Um, so look, if you're sending it to people, they're opening the email, but they're not calling you. You're not listening to your calls. Change your messaging. Um, you know, people want to use artificial intelligence. Say, hey, make my email more fun. And you can use chat GTP to make it more fun. Uh, it's what I do with mine, and I, I promise you it, it works, and the proof's in the pudding. Hope you all had a great time on this call. If you enjoyed this call, please let us know. Uh, if you know anybody that can use our services, please send them out to us. And if you're currently not using our program, we do encourage you to sign up. And if you are using our program, thank you. And my kids, thank you for putting shoes on their feet. And Jeff's, Jeff's grandkids appreciate it as well. Yeah, not, to, not to age you, Jeff, but we're just <laughs> trying to say thanks that, that your money does go to good places. So um, everybody, I hope you have a great week. Hope everybody had an amazing Thanksgiving. And we'll continue to do more of these webinars in the future. I absolutely love them. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, everybody.